there's going to be some obstacles um, that we feel that you know we can't over overcome or when you're on your path to success there's always going to be those roadblocks here and there so i tore all pretty much all the ligaments in my right ankle uh, i end up uh, finding out the next day after the game that i had broke my fibula i'm pretty sure a, a lot of people probably doubt it i mean the city of philadelphia they doubted i'm sure that i would have been ready and i told them i was like yo i said if the team uh, when they win or if they make it to the playoffs they make it to the super bowl i told them with no hesitation, I said, I'll be ready. I may not be considered the GOAT in some people's eyes, but if you look at me and you look at my highlight, I definitely fit the description. But at the end of the day, we're all gonna struggle. I struggled, but I didn't quit. And that's what I encourage a lot of people to do. Just don't quit. You mentioned the idea of belief in yourself and one of the things about what we do is we we attract a lot of people who are are pursuing that belief in themselves and some days they're on the right side of it and some days they're not on the right side of it but you talk about as you started to believe more and more in yourself if you were to talk to somebody who right now who's who's struggling in that regard what would you say to somebody who needs to believe in themselves i uh, probably will say just take advantage of the opportunities um that you're given um and i think it'll take it'll take you further than you can ever imagine if you just stay on course. Um, you know, I think for me personally, I, I, what set me apart, I think from everyone else is that my dedication and my discipline and just the execution of being consistent is what put me in a different stratosphere, just put me on a, a different level. And I think people were able to see that. Um, sometimes, like I said, I didn't want to just blend in. I wanted to stand out. And so even with my daughter who's playing volleyball now, um, she was, I mean, she, right now she's a better athlete than I, honestly, than I was in high school. Um, she, now she plays, uh, she, she's going into her senior year, um, but she, she plays volleyball. Um, she, she was playing on the varsity, varsity uh, volleyball team as a freshman. And I, I mean, I, I, I can't say enough about her and what she's able to accomplish. And I wanted to instill the confidence in her and, and really just share with her what she, what she's accomplishing and what she's doing because that doesn't happen all the time. When I was in high school, there were a couple of athletes on our football team, basketball team that played at the varsity level as freshmen and sophomores. That's that's a sign of greatness. That's something that's potential. That's that's showing that showing you that you have ability that's well beyond where you are. And so for me uh, and anybody else, um, that's how you can measure yourself. Measure, you have to be realistic and measure yourself against, uh, you know, kids, your peers, and really, uh, you, know, you know, peers that are a little bit better than you. And so for me, um, that's what I did. And, and I saw that I wasn't as great as everybody else. I was a realist. And I knew that I had to put a little bit of more, uh, a little bit uh, of, of extra work uh, in order to get on their level, because I knew that I was a late bloomer. Um, I figured it out. Like, yeah, I was a late bloomer, but competitively inside, I had the mindset that I was just as good as they were. Uh, but coaches obviously saw it different uh, because they're uh, they're better at evaluating talent uh, and, and skill set um, than I than I did. Because obviously, we're going to think highly uh, of ourselves and, and want to put ourselves in you know on the same uh, plateau as some of our, our teammates and peers or what have you. But um, that was just something that I that I wanted to. Uh, to accomplish it. And so my daughter, like I said, she's accomplishing something well beyond what I did as a, as a freshman, sophomore, uh, a junior in high school. And at the end of the day, I think what made me who I am is that I had a strong dissatisfaction at, w at, at where I was as an athlete, um, you know, starting out. Strong dissatisfaction with where I was as an athlete. That's, that's unreal. You talk about discipline, and we still see it. We still see the way you can still step on the football field at 47 and, and literally light it up. Um, take us into your daily routines. How do you stay as disciplined as you are? As I said earlier, I think you just have to be consistent. Um, consistency is key. Not only just, um, I didn't, I, I realized that not only in just uh, an athlete, uh, just in athletics or sports or what have you, um, but it's very key in, in, in every aspect of your life. And I think um, sports and outside of sports, uh, business, um, just even in personal relationships or just uh, just 
establishing um, you know a rapport a bond even with family communication consistency uh, is key with anything but I think like I said the most part uh, the best part uh, about it and the most important part is communication um, and so I started to realize that um, later on um, as my career progressed um, if you communicate and uh, know how and understand how to uh, communicate with you know uh, your peers, coaches, um, and and be receptive um, to uh, constructive criticism. Um, then I think you you give your, yourself an opportunity to grow um, not only as a person but as an athlete at the same time. Because there's there's always communication in in everything that that we do. And I think if there's a a, a great um, I guess rapport or uh, great lines uh, lines of communication. Um, where it's harmonious and uh, and I think being able to listen um, instead of so being so quick to to respond or speak um, then I think you know things will you know you'll see a lot of things a lot clearer but I think what we underestimate sometimes is your mindset and and the character it took to come out of a small school hit the NFL and and be a late bloomer and to rise up what do you think, if you think about that idea of skill set and mindset, what's your edge over everyone else? I think no different than anybody else, but I'm sure a lot of athletes that have, you know, obviously achieved an amount of success, I think when their doubt creeps in or there's naysayers or there's doubters, I think the, the best thing that I ever did, I ever did, obviously, I think was believe in myself. Uh, that's first and foremost. Um, yeah, and I think... Uh, for me, I just, it, it, I saw and I listened to what the coach, you know, uh, said and they saw in me, which was uh, a lot of potential. Um, and I just wanted to build on that. And so um, with me, I think, you know, if I didn't have the, the, the coaches that pushed me, um, pushed me beyond really kind of, I think, my own limits or my own expectations, I don't think that I would have become uh, the receiver that I became. I don't think I would have been this guy that became T.O. Um, obviously, like I said, when you talk about uh, physically, I fit the description um, of, of, of an athlete. I fit the description of one of those physically uh, imposing receivers, uh, I guess, became a poster child for prototypical receivers that came after me. Because um, if you look at the, 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 the transition uh, of the receiver position, before me and after me, they started to become bigger, faster, and stronger. Uh, you think of guys like uh, Calvin Johnson, they called him Megatron. You think of uh, uh, Julio Jones. You know, these are big body uh, type of receivers that possess, you know, not only just, uh, you know, the hands and catch radius, um, but we think about the speed and the power of these guys. That I think that's something that people marvel at, marvel at as they saw the progression um, each and every year um, that I played in the National Football League. And I think after my third year in the league, after I made the, the catch against the Green Bay Packers, I think that instilled uh, a lot of confidence in myself that I could play and I could play on a big stage. Um, it didn't. It didn't start out particularly well, but that's where the cliche statement, uh, the, 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 the cliche, um, I guess, statement um, comes of. You know, it's not how you start; it's how you finish. And so, for me, that mindset of just not wanting to quit, not wanting to succumb to uh, just the ebbs and flow uh, of of the game, and uh, you know, disappointment, um, having short term memory. Um, nobody's perfect. You're going to have those days. Some days you're going to have it. Some days you, you're not. And it's the great ones that look beyond that 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 mistake and just have short term memory and go to the next that you no know, go to the next play as if the bad play just didn't happen. Um, that's where you have a small percentage of of, of great athletes in every sport. Um, you have your average, you have your good, and you have your great. And so uh, there's a little small percentage in a window. Uh, of athletes uh, that really go beyond, um, you know, the stratosphere of just being just good and allowing just your athletic your athletic ability and talent um, take you to where you want to. Um, athletic ability it can only take you so far. But when you think about some of the great athletes and in so many sports, and I I I think the perfect examples. I think 
for me, it's because I love basketball. You think about a lot of these kids, um, they go from high school to the pros. And obviously that's not the case now. You only have, you have to go one year, but just think about the kids that went, go from high school to, to the pros. You think about uh, your Kevin Garnett, you think about your Kobe Bryant, uh, your LeBron James, um, Michael Jordan, he's one of the greatest. Uh, he didn't go from uh, high school to college. I mean, high school to the pros, but he's considered, you know, obviously the greatest of, of all time. But when you think about what Michael Jordan did as setting the blueprint, especially for a guy like Kobe, he, who was a, at that point when he was alive, he was a living carbon copy of one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Uh, you think about what LeBron has done. Uh, he lived up to the expectation, lived up to the potential in which a lot of scouts and owners and GMs um, pegged him as. And so, uh, that's why you look at Steph Curry. That's why you see these guys, they enhance upon their abilities and their their potential. And, then, and, and when you look at scouts and how they grade or evaluate talent, sometimes these scouts are way off base. Look at the, If you go back and look at some of the scouting reports of a guy like Steph Curry, uh, who's a small frame, another guy, Kevin Durant, they said these guys were, were not going to make it in the league. It was going to be tough. But these are some of the guys that are, I mean, they're lighting it up every night, uh, making it to uh, beyond the expectations of, you know, the playoffs, getting to the finals. Look at what Kevin Durant has done, even after the Achilles injury. Not to mention, you know, one of the greatest, uh, you know, basketball players, uh, you know, in LeBron James. Uh, look at what uh, Michael Jordan did. Um, so, again, when you think about these guys, um, these guys enhance their abilities. They go beyond and they exceed expectations because uh, it's that mindset of wanting to be great. Um, I think it's. I think Kobe said it best, and I think a lot of athletes uh, that are you know hovering around that stratosphere of, of being great and considered one of the greatest is that it's a relentless pursuit of greatness.